What 80s family fantasy sci-fi movie originally started out as a horror script called Night Skies? Up next on Cinema B-Side. Oh, hello, hi there, it's me Todd. I'm in the studio, and today's sponsor is myself. The best way to support the channel is to subscribe to my Patreon, where not only do you become a member of the community, you get early access to the B-side videos as well as watch-throughs of movies or TV shows we are covering, and other movie reactions and commentaries from a filmmaker's perspective. And if that's out of your budget, no worries. Just hit that like button. It really does help out the channel with the algorithm. And of course subscribe to get the latest videos delivered directly to you. Hit that notification bell to be alerted of the newest uploads. And please share these videos with your friends and family. And now back to our regularly scheduled program. After the blockbuster Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Steven Spielberg was looking for a way to follow it up. And a science fiction horror script came across his desk called Night Skies. But having spent the better part of a year on a darker movie, Raiders of the Lost Ark, he wanted to make something a little less violent and more spiritual. So he asked his scriptwriter, Melissa Matheson, to rework the script, and she loved a specific part of the movie about the bond between a boy and an alien. Ultimately, that original movie never got made, but ideas and scenes from that script made it into great 80s movies like Poltergeist, Gremlins, and of course, E.T. the Extraterrestrial. So today, we are going to find all of the Southern California locations for the movie E.T. So are you ready? Oh, I'm actually not ready. Hold on. Okay, now I'm ready. Let's go! A lot of people that get into the entertainment industry have a list of movies that influence them to become part of the entertainment industry and E.T. is one of the movies that's at the top of my list. I vividly remember going to the theater and I was roughly Elliot's age and fully immersed in this fantasy world where aliens come to visit and the boy and the alien have this bond. It really affected me. I was in tears at the end of the movie. Like, Elliot was his friend and they helped him and now he's gone. It would, I really, really got to me. And, you know, it's one of those movies that showed me the power of cinema. And that's one of the reasons why I have my little co-host here, E.T., on my dash. My friends got it for me for a birthday gift one year. What do you think, little buddy? We are on our way to find all of the filming locations for your movie today. How exciting is that? Of course, it all starts right here at Elliot's house in Tahunga, California. So, so much takes place here at the house in Tahunga, and it all starts with Elliot getting the pizza from the pizza delivery man so he can get in on the D&D &D game with the older boys. Now the backyard was actually filmed on a set at the Universal Backlot. It's not actually the backyard of this house. Cause, well, obviously there isn't a giant cornfield growing back there. After Elliot realizes E.T. loves Reese's Pieces, he uses them as bait to try and go find him. And he goes down the driveway and you can see that house on Dos Rios Drive as he goes looking for E.T. We are now in Porter Ranch as Elliot rides his bike on that hiking trail, which seems a lot less safe now without that guardrail, as he continues his search for E.T. All of the forest scenes were actually filmed at the Redwood Forest in Northern California. They weren't actually filmed here in Los Angeles. And actually, it's the same forest that doubles as Endor for Return of the Jedi. So E.T. and the Ewoks have more in common than just being from another planet. And here is where Elliot spots the mysterious man with the keys and realizes his newfound friend might already be in trouble. And now we're back here at the house where Mike 
tries to back the car down the driveway and bangs into the walls and ends up finally getting down here and then Gertie tattletailing on him. So the movie was filmed in two separate locations. One was Tahunga, where we were just at, for Elliot and E.T.'s house and his little neighborhood there. But then almost all of the rest was filmed in Porter Ranch. And Porter Ranch was just being built at the time of the filming. So in the movie, you're going to see housing tracks being laid out and uh, homes being built. And today, we're going to see what it looks like now. Now this looks like it's as close as I'm going to get to the spot where the man with the keys is standing overlooking the valley as they are on the case to try and figure out that E.T. is with Elliot. But really, it looks like they were actually standing up here where these houses are now. And there's all these bushes and trees and I don't want to go standing in anyone's backyard. But technically they're actually standing up there overlooking the valley here. Okay, so I climbed up the side of the hill to where this storm drain is. This is as close as I can get to the houses. This is a little bit better, but this one old burnt tree is in the way but you can kind of line up some of the houses down there. But yeah, this is it. The mysterious man with the keys who's looking for E.T. stands almost right here. <laughs> well, as you can see, a lot has changed since the filming of E.T. There's these bushes that have grown here and there's these trees and shrubs on the other side, and I'm gonna go attempt to try and get the one overhead shot of the house from behind it, but these might be in my way, but cross our fingers, let's see what happens. Well, it's not as bad as I thought, but that one tree is in the way. So like I said, everything has changed quite a bit since then, but here's where the boys come out of the garage and walk down the driveway discussing, how do you explain school to higher intelligence? We are now on Vista Grande Way and Capistrano Lane, also in Porter Ranch. And where this light post is, is where all the kids were waiting for the school bus. And Elliot rides up on his bike and the boys start giving him a hard time. Hey, Elliot. Where's your goblin? He's not a goblin, he's a spaceman. Oh really? Where is he from? Uranus? Get it? Uranus? He doesn't get it. But yeah, there it is. The school bus pulls up right there. This fence has obviously been added. And this house is for sale. So hey, maybe someone can buy this house and be a part of film history. Dude, Elliot. Pay attention to the cute blonde girl trying to get your attention. You actually end up kissing her later on in the movie. But that girl grows up to be a playboy playmate. And you're arguing with your dumb older brother's friends about zero charisma or whatever. <laughs> and you can see this house and that window is lined up right behind them and the buses. The Halloween night plan to get E.T. out of the house dressed like a ghost past mom is set in motion right here at Granada Circle and Kilmore Avenue in Porter Ranch. As you can see, some of the houses have changed just a little. Some outdoor upgrades have been made, but mostly everything lines up right here. Now this house to the right has fully been redone on the outside, but the other ones, like the one at the end of the court, and this one right here in front of the Kilmore Avenue sign, looks very familiar as the boys turn E.T. away from the kid dressed like Yoda <laughs> because, well, Yoda's an alien, just like E.T., and he's very confused. Now, obviously the fence has been updated since then, but back in the same area where Elliot rides his bike on the bike trail is the same place 
that Gertie is waiting for the boys on Halloween night as they execute their plan to help E.T. phone home. After Elliot returns home without E.T., he tells Mike he's got to go find him. Mikey jumps on his bike, rides down the driveway of the house, and the agents spot him. He turns and ends up down Viking Avenue and Kilmar Avenue here in Porter Ranch. You can see that house with the stripes right behind him, and the agents turn and are on his tail. We are now on Rinaldi Street in Porter Ranch, and Mikey cuts through the back of this house to try and lose the agents which spot him down this alley and they turn to chase him down this way. He heads down the alley towards us, tries to lose the agents this way, realizes it's a dead end, smashes through the two garbage cans which are luckily enough set up right here for us, rides up the hill into the storm drain and makes his way safely away from the agents that are following him. The man with the keys and his team have arrived as they finally figured out who has been hiding E.T. from them. The FBI pulls up right in front of the house, right next door to Elliot's house right here. You can see that archway right there. The house is a little different, but you can see that archway right in the shot. Everyone is lined up right here in front of the same house, wondering and watching what is happening. Mikey getting stopped by the agent here, and I've never driven forward before. And they head down the street in their attempt to rescue E.T. Did anyone ever realize that one of the kids when he puts the hat and the headphones on, looks exactly like Steven Spielberg. It's mini Steven Spielberg. <laughs> Meet us at the playground at the top of the hill and bring the bikes. Leads us here to the Porter Ridge Park. Everything on this playground has been replaced. Everything is brand new, except one thing. Yes, the Caterpillar Jungle Gym is still intact. Michael horribly drives the van right up into the park, right in between the hump of the caterpillar. The boys are lined up right here next to the caterpillar as they finally get to see the reveal of E.T. out of the back of the white van. Everyone scrambling and trying to find the boys leads them here as they run up this hill and you can see that house with the three windows in the vent right behind everyone as they run up the hill. And the final chase begins, which takes place right here on Calle Vista Circle, as the boys turn right in front of this house. Right there, you can see it in the shot. They come up Kilmore and turn left into this path that's in between these two houses. You can see this one house in the shot. We can go right down that way. This whole housing tract was being built when they were filming the movie. And it looks like when the final chase is on, the boys end up at this intersection on Darby. They turn this way as they head to the next scene, which is down the hill a little bit further. The boys come down this street and try to split up at a certain point. And they go down this way where this house is now built. Also, the car follows them and goes up this driveway. Back here is where the dirt hills were, where the boys try to lose the agents, jump over the hills, and end up landing on top of his car. And then the final turn takes place here on Edelston Drive in front of this house. The boys try to turn left down Celtic Way, and you can see this is the house. I know this giant tree is blocking our view, but the windows above the garage line up and that fireplace shows this is the house that was being built during the filming of the movie. And this is what it looks like now. And finally, right here on White Oak Avenue is where E.T.'s most famous scene takes place. When the boys think they finally made it away and see Thomas Howe screams out, yeah, we made it. But as we know, they didn't. They continue down and you can see this one tree to the right in the shot. Well, it's got that V shape right there. You can see it as Elliot 
runs towards the intersection. And right here at the intersection, it seems there's no hope as the two cars from the agents has their pathway blocked off. But E.T. digs down deep and uses his powers and makes the boys fly right over. Uh, has anyone ever noticed that one agent on the right there, like, what the heck is he doing? Is he just, like, what, what is happening? All right, everyone, that's a wrap on all of the E.T. filming locations here in L.A. What did you think? Write it down in the comments. And of course, don't forget to like and share and subscribe so you can get more of my filming location videos, of my Emmy events that I get to attend, and all these fun things I get to do here in Los Angeles. Thanks for watching, everyone. I am out of here.